We are live. Jays aren't losing to the Rockies today. Go get your Rockies tickets. Really? Jays are awful, bud. Yeah. Who is? We're the pirates Jays? today, bud. We are. Uh, yeah, we're we're the pirates today. Good day to everybody there in the chat. I think there's plenty of pirates in that chat to begin with. <laughs> Solid day yesterday. Oh yeah, buddy. We were in the green. I uh, love so it. Obviously, point night in Toronto. They lost, but. Only Toronto can call it point night and still lose a hockey game. <laughs> but uh, that it was nice to see a Matthews from Bertuzzi, from Domi. Domi assists going forward. It's a lock. It, it has to be. He's a dishing magician, man. And and the great part on it that we talked about yesterday is that he's not on the power play one, and that's why he's being discounted so much. But the Leafs can't score on the power play, and they're only scoring. Uh, five on five. And so there's value on that side too. So as producer Mick Pokesberry says, like that stream and subscribe. All odds coming via sports interaction. We got a five game slate today. I mean, it was, I put a, I put a full, like a, a good unit on, on that, that Matthews goal. Matthews goal, Bertuzzi assist, Domi assist at 10 to one is still yeah, you nailed that, man. That was a dumb, that was a dumb I, line. I, it was what first was it? Oh no, Bertuzzi got a second period assist, but I believe it was the third goal. Yeah, second period assist, but it almost was a too too good to be true. That uh, yeah, that was easy. I was in a baseball meeting with other men just talking about dry baseball, <laughs> and boom, I'm like, let's go, yeah. Carolina, St. Louis, Carolina, back on wagon status, St. Louis, coming off that nice easy game, four shots, four goals versus Chicago. St. Louis team total under two and a half, minus 120. Josh is throwing out unders to begin his Friday. Something's wrong here, but <clears throat> Carolina's the team. They're on a tear since the deadline. 1.88 goals against average, which is first. They're 12-3-1. They've held to opponents two or fewer goals 12 times over those 15 games. St. Louis is missing neighbors. Tory Krug is out. Carolina just won over in its last 10 games playing well, and that usually parlays into great under hockey. And Freddie Anderson, load management Freddie Anderson, hasn't played two straight games. He's been playing. He's off. He's been playing. He's been off. He's 8-1 and one since returning. And wow. two or fewer goals in eight of those games. With the goaltending situation, Carlo in Carolina. Is Carolina the best team in the, in the East heading into the playoffs? And can they lock up the one seed? And this is such a – like trying to – handicap the eastern conference right now is just it's berserk like I, I it's it's such a scramble like there's so many good teams i don't think there's one team that stands out significantly from the other um i like what carolina ha did at the deadline i like the make of their team right now they went to the conference finals last year and they got there without this Vechnikov playing and now they've got him playing and they've got Gensel and Kuznetsov as well, too, that they've added to their offense. I like Carolina a lot to be a threat in the Eastern Conference, but you know, same can be said about the Rangers. Same can be said about the Panthers. You know, the the Lightning are a sleepy te sleeper team that I love. And man, you know how I feel about the Islanders. What about the Pittsburgh Penguins? What if they get into the playoffs? Could they go on a Florida Panthers run like they did last year, especially with Sidney Crosby no. leading the way? Yeah, you say no, but. We know we know more. The one thing we know about hockey is once playoffs start, you know nothing about hockey because. Do you think that old team's going to hold happens. up for the playoffs, bud? Why not? Mm. They're playing the underdog role. When was the last time they went into a playoff series as an underdog? I don't know. When was the last time they went into the playoffs? They made uh, the last year was the first year they missed in what Sid's whole career. Yeah, so I don't know. Like, but going back to the Carolina thing. The thing that impresses me the most is one, they get great goaltending, and two, they play probably the best team defense in the league. Yeah. Shout out to uh Brindamore for sure. Just uh it's what they do, and it's they've mm -hmm. done it for like four straight years. It's 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 probably the most consistent thing in all of hockey. So St. Louis struggling to score tonight, coming off an easier game versus uh uh, Chicago. They didn't score a goal. I don't think they scored a goal after no, those the rest of the game. Goal. No, they scored four in like five minutes in the first period, and then that's four goals it. on their first four shots. No, or was it three yeah. and three? 
Something like that. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. So um, I don't know. It's, it's a tough spot for them. Uh, let's go that team total under two and a half. It is funny when you think about it, when they were missing Svechnikov and it was a, a big deal. Now you look at that Carolina roster and you're like, oh, Svechnikov's what? Their fourth best forward right now? Yeah. Like dangerous team. Dangerous yeah. team. All right, let's move on. We got an under, yucky under in the books. Can we get something better? No, we're going Nashville, Chicago. Another under. Don't even watch. Check in at the second period. Nashville, Chicago, first period under one and a half, minus 115. If anything, Chicago got embarrassed. Like, I, I believe it was three goals and three shots. I know that. I don't know if the fourth goal was on the fourth shot. Uh, <clears throat> Sander Blom came in and shut the door. They haven't confirmed a goaltender. You don't have to bet this right now. If Peter Morazic does start, he shouldn't. <clears throat> then I, I'm probably off this, but I'll, I'll play this. Chicago has to have a bounce back. They're much better at home. We mention it all the time. Uh, 5.46 total goals per game at home. Uh, one of the lowest marks in all of hockey. <clears throat> Nothing really needs to be said about this. This is just minus 115. And Nashville's a good team at getting up and sitting on a lead. Does Chicago re like, do even bad teams like Chicago rebound after embarrassing things like that? Yeah, of course they do. There's a pride factor, right? Um, and I think Chicago, you know, they've been counting the days to the end of the regular season since probably the second week of the season, <laughs> right? Because of the season that they're having. Um, and I think if you just look at these two teams, you know, over the last couple of weeks, they don't tend to get off to really fast starts, goal scoring, um, especially in Nashville where post 18 game point streak, I know they had that three game after that where it was goals galore that they were giving up, but they really weren't scoring much. And I think they've kind of hit a wall here. So this has the potential to be a sleepy game. I like I like your angle here with with the the under in the first period because it might take a little bit for both teams to get going. And Nashville's going to get good goaltending. You know, Chicago finds a way to just you know, one not take any penalties so you don't get any any power plays and two just play a sleepy game and give themselves a chance to win. Yeah, even sleepier at home. Uh no goal in the first 10 minutes uh also something that I would look at if you're getting it at the same price. <clears throat> Let's get a player prop on the board here. Uh, as we see some questions, Yossi over two and a half shots, question mark. Yossi's just been an absolute stud East. of late. Yeah. He, it's, he's, he's pointing on everything. Nyquist assist AB says, uh, <clears throat> I mean, basically anybody on that top line, but I, I don't, I don't like this being a shootout. Like I think you're probably overpaying for Nashville prop points, point, point props. Uh, despite them being a giant favorite here. Let's go Jason Zucker for some shots. Wanted some plus money. Was looking at uh, our boy Evangelista, but he's off power play too. He's on third line. Zucker, power play too. Second line. Guy played nine minutes last game. <clears throat> it's okay. Still had three mm -hmm. shots. He is 10-5 and five to the over on this since being traded. He's a shoot first guy. He's second on the team in shots on goal per 60. Nothing crazy. He's averaging 14 minutes, so hopefully he's not another 10-minute guy. But even at a low, low eight, nine minutes, time on ice, which is wild, he's still getting three. So yeah. Jason Zucker, vet, why not? Kind of the same thing we did with, with uh, Lundell yesterday. Lundell yesterday, yeah. Yeah, kind of going off the top line if things get out of control. Yeah. Give Zucker and, and the middle six maybe a few more minutes. Love it. Nothing wild there. value on it, too. That's what I mean. Like if I'm if I'm going for it, let's go for the plus money. And that's why we did it with Lundell too. That closed. We actually it closed the other way. It closed at like plus one fifty, which was really yeah. It went the other way on us. So happy to get that, especially when they added it on. <clears throat> let's go victory lap time. Still Arizona at Edmonton. Don't take Edmonton versus Vegas. Vegas was on the last <laughs> game. I didn't even look because I was looking at the Vegas line. Vegas was on the last game. Like they're. Eighth road game in seven games. They're happy to be back. We'll get to Vegas in a couple picks. But Edmonton, we see it a lot, and you can probably touch on this, how a team comes together in a situation without its best player. We see it with the Leafs quite often, like when mm -hmm. guys like Morgan Riley are out and guys like Mitch Marner are out. All of a sudden, like the team plays a better brand of defensive hockey. Do you think you saw that in Edmonton versus Vegas? 
Yeah, I, I think what I saw in Edmonton was an inspired team, like a team that played with more determination than I've seen them play in a long time. And maybe it was because they knew they were playing a big game against a team they probably don't want to face in the playoffs in the Vegas Golden Knights and thought that it, with a victory against them, they would probably increase those chances of them not playing them in the playoffs. And you saw everybody st step up, and that's normally the reaction you see in the NHL when guys are out. Guys embrace new roles and new opportunities and maybe even just a new guy leading the way, which is clearly what happened in Edmonton. Um, a game I thought that went complete opposite the way I was expecting, considering that Aiden Hill was back for Vegas. Hurdle was playing his second game. But kudos to Edmonton. They showed, um, you know, they, they, they gave people a different perception of them, that they're not just a team driven by McDavid. And, you know, they get a they get a kind of a layup matchup tonight against Arizona, but hey, Arizona played inspired hockey the other night when they found out that they're moving to Utah against the Vancouver Canucks. So um probably buyer beware here with Edmonton if you're um thinking of betting against them that you think Arizona and all the talk around them recently might motivate these players to play a little more just because they're pissed off about their whole situation that they're in. It's kind of embarrassing for them. Yeah, if I was reading a Logan Cooley quote and he was that's it, it came off like I'm like, wow, that's an aggressive quote for a guy. He's like, the media's trying to spin it like this. We're just trying to band together. We only care about the boys in the locker room. I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Uh, but it could be inspiring. And uh, the second game without McDavid's a little different than the first one. Right. Right. I, I think in that spot, not big on Edmonton, but I am on the big angle of uh, picking up on D men versus bad teams which you love d-man versus the coyotes <laughs> because they just the game script never changes for them either way right yeah. and and i mean arizona's still a bottom five team in allowing shots to opposing defensemen and matias at home out of nowhere has really picked up his game everybody's talking about bush and bush is still priced as the guy he's been all year but at home has looked fantastic eight and three to the over on this in his last 11 games have you know <laughs> Ekholm has 18 points over his last 14 games. Like, this is the guy they picked up that who he's supposed to be. I mean, he doesn't have that role that Bouchard does, but he's starting to do it, so he's shooting. Arizona's giving it up, and when you don't have McDavid, uh, you're creating opportunities other ways. So let's get Ekholm there on uh, some defenseman shots. Anaheim, Calgary, bud. Like, Calgary, it's, it's wraps, right? Like, there was that glimmer of hope, obviously – they're two and eight straight up in their last 10. One of those wins came against San Jose extra time. Anaheim already beat Calgary as like a plus 210 road dog. Yeah. Now they get them at home. Let's go. Ducks, 125. We're back on these young guys that don't care, right? I mean, Beneers didn't help us, but we're seeing guys just jump up in this spot. Anaheim coming off that 3 1 win versus LA. And the last game, talk to me about this one. The last game. For a California road trip <clears throat> for Calgary, heading back home, season's a wrap. <laughs> would, would they maybe go out the night before? Uh, yeah, there's probably a chance, um, you know, considering what night it is. I mean, it's uh, Thursday night. I'm not sure what much is going on in California. I'm pretty sure you can find something. You but, find something to do. Um, look, it's <laughs> – for teams like this, you're 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 just you're you're trying to finish on a good note, but also trying to finish. <laughs> you want to get the season over with, and there can always be built-in excuse. And I think the the I don't think it's a built-in excuse. I think it's just reality that the Calgary Flames are probably just they have been playing a little bit over their head for a stretch here, even leading into the deadline when they were trading guys away and still having success. And I think it's finally catching up to them now where they're just recognizing that they're not that talented and you have other guys you're just giving a chance to, uh, to see what, you know, they can bring to this year and, and maybe into, into next year's build of the team. So, uh, but Anaheim, you know, a lot to play for, for them, um, especially with the young, the young guys that they have, it's, it's this time of year, you want to find rosters that have more young guys and more American league guys on it because, they're getting more chances to prove that they can be NHL players versus a team that's really got nothing to play for. No, <clears throat> I like that angle for sure. Uh, as AB points out, this could be a point fest, and I absolutely agree. Calgary, 
<clears throat> 3.93 goals against average last 30 days. Yeah, only worse than good. the Flyers. <laughs> Leo Carlson, let's go. Let's get him for a point. Let's keep going. Plus 120. Why not? Four points last four games. You're just hammering points. away at the place today. Eh? You're just feeling it. 20 minutes a game the guy's getting. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing we talked about. Beneers, same thing we were mentioning with Shane Wright. Same thing we're talking about Slavkowski. These guys are getting opportunities to be like, Carlson was the number four pick. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like, he, he's he he's been in and out two of the lineup. Pick. Number two pick. He was two? Yeah, he went two. Confantilli went third. Oh, jeepers. Yeah. Uh, all right, so he was a two pick. So, like, we're seeing, like, a run where he's like, okay, I need to build on something going into the offseason. Mm -hmm. And he's getting the opportunities in Anaheim. First line center, power play one center, playing with Troy Terry. Uh, and I believe veteran Alex Kalorn on the other side. So there's a lot to like, and there's just this could be this could be a rollover game from Calgary. Like I said, last game the California road trip, go home season, uh, kind of concluding here, and 3.93 goals against average over a pretty good stretch of 30 days is is a rough spot. Let's go back to Vegas. The beauty of sports betting: you fade one team one day, and you're back on them the next day. <laughs> well, that's Vegas. Like, they're happy to be back. Eight games, one home game. They've been on the road. They haven't played a lot of good hockey, so they'll be happy to get back. You mentioned Thomas Hurdle's back. This will be his first home game. I'm sure. Does that put money on the board, your first home game, for someone who's been skating with oh, the team? Oh, yeah. First home yeah. game, plus the Hannafin contract that was signed. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. That's going to be big money on the board, too. Uh, facing a team that's freshly eliminated, I believe, in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah. it's it's ugly town for Minnesota, and I think Vegas rolls here. The offense, we, you mention it often. Guys come back to lineup. Hurdle's been out for a long time. Game three, the the rust is kind of knocked yeah. off. He'll have that uh, motivating factor. And Hannafin, he's he, he's got some he's got some pads in his pockets. That's for sure. He got some stacks. Uh, but this is a great spot here. Uh, Minnesota is is a shaky situation, and. Vegas is goaltending, also shaky. So we could get two-way scoring. Give me Vegas team total over three and a half, even money. You think this is a point where they get home and the boys in the locker room say, all right, Handy got paid. Hurdles first game. Let's <laughs> yeah, go. Money on the board. Right? And, but yes. like this, this, this could be a motivating point where it's like, this is where we make our playoff push right here. And they can they can get their playoff, they can get their playoff ticket tonight, too. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Sorry, I'm just watching Tiger shot here. Um, Tiger shot as alert. He, as he uh, is he wincing? He, is he grimacing? Eh, no, he's starting his second round off a of one, and he hit into the fairway. So, um, but look, uh, you, you you make some great points. There's there's a lot of excitement to return home. Um, you look at the schedule too. Um, the return home factor. You got new guys coming back into the lineup. There's going to be some money on the board and extra motivation for guys to sort of get back on the winning ways. Because look. The embarrassing losses. We talked about it. That was an embarrassing loss for Vegas against Edmonton the other night. And they're fighting for their playoff lives, knowing that St. Louis plays tonight. They're three, only three points ahead or three points behind Vegas. And Vegas isn't a sure lock to make the playoffs. So this is a big game for Vegas versus a team that's got nothing to play for. Yeah. Looking up some hurdle props. Because you know the card isn't big enough, but uh hurdle minus 125 for a point. Okay, I don't love it. I just want to see not much of a shooter, zero just zero shots in the last game. One he's uh plus 125 for three plus shots. So kind of staying away. Think this is a team game. Vegas can uh, put up some goals here versus Minnesota. Uh the three one does scare me. We've been we've been hit with a three one Vegas win over the three and a half totals, but at least you'll get your empty net opportunity in that situation. But <clears throat> masters are kicking. We, we released a bunch of MLB plays. Not much happening in the afternoon. You like the Rockies tonight, eh, against the Jays? I like plus 200 versus a Jays team that should probably fire its hitting coach and has no bullpen arms. And Kevin who's, Gosman. Uh, who's pitching for the Jays? Kevin Gosman. Oh, you're going against the Gauze. Going against the Gauze. That's priced oh, in, bud. All right. All right. 
Now, now I have to bet it. Now I hate the hate that I'm like <clears throat> was leaning there. And now that I've talked about it, I got to shut yeah. up. And well, somebody and somebody did in the chat did say that it's the lucky pirate hat tonight. So lucky pirate hat. So also there was a comment there. Happy to see that Andy's on the St. Louis team total under two and a half. So that's always good news uh, when you're riding with Mr. Francis. So we are with him and the sniffers. Let's go. Let's do a quick recap and get the hell out of here. Friday, absolutely crushing it. Like 40 units. Like it's, it's, it's not. Yeah. It's time of year. It's, here. it's happy times. It's happy times over at <laughs> NHL Puck Props presented by Sports Interaction. But here we go. Here's the rundown. And if you haven't already hit that like button. And if you're catching this show late, and you and you're a donkey, and you don't want to listen to the great play-by-play, and you just want to catch the picks. Just scroll to the end and get them. We'll put them there. I also put the plays in the comments as well. St. Louis team total under two and a half minus one twenty. Nashville, Chicago first period under one and a half minus one fifteen. Also like no goal in the under first ten. Uh, Jason Zucker plus money over two and a half. He's getting three shots at eight minutes. Give him some more minutes over there. Matthias Ekholm. Over two and a half shots, D men versus bad defending teams. Anaheim money line plus 125. Calgary wants to get out of California. And Carlson, a uh, little push here, late season push for a point, plus 120. And then Vegas, happy to be back. Over three and a half goals, even money. Love that play. Love them all. So let's get some things going. Hey, answer, uh, answer the two questions at the end. Any Turkish soccer plays? All right, so I haven't. I, I, I did look. It's it's been ugly because it, it, there's Champions League. So like, if you know anything about the the soccer schedule? It, yeah. It's turd city trying to figure out when they play. <laughs> I never know what's happening. But if if there and, is, uh, there's one game. I'm not touching it. Okay. I might touch some uh, Bundesliga two at twelve thirty. Ooh, okay, okay. But, you, but those are the place. The, a lot of those soccer plays are the things I do to keep my accounts live, which yeah. is overs. Both teams to score and favorites. And when you look like a donkey better like that and you just keep it consistent, I look like a square better. I also fair just enough, look like enough. a square better wearing these glasses and this hat. Well, Josh cool. asked, do you parlay any of your bets or all single entries? Singles, bud. Singles. Singles. Plus 125? Like, why throw plus 125 oh, in, a parlay, in a parlay? Plus 125s are sexy, right? I'm not parlaying my Colorado Rockies money line into anything. That's plus 210. <laughs> <laughs> no. if, if we got something we can parlay we'll definitely put it up there but that's what we're running with great to have everybody there in the chat carlo's attention is at uh amen corner right now i believe no, but enjoy your tired. master's it's weekend tired. this is a spot where carlo's locked in the basement sorry kids <laughs> <laughs> but that's it this is also the biggest weekend you guys probably are touched on it with ak vasectomy weekend of the year the most oh, yeah yeah. Yeah. Just Perfect. That's it. That's if, if you're getting stop. a vasectomy on Masters weekend and that's you're planning ahead of that time, that's the best plus EV move. Oh, for in sure. All a buddy of mine just had a baby and he's like, I'm going to love this baby forever because she picked the best time to come, Masters weekend. I can just sit here and watch her sleep on me while I watch golf. <laughs> Amazing. Smart. Smart. There's a lot of smart human beings out there and a lot of them like to watch golf. Let's yeah. go. No Frozen Four. Don't even know it was in there, but, uh, Bro, did you see the spit and chicklets about uh, – uh, where did Jonathan Taves go to school? Uh, North Dakota. Yeah. Have you seen their – Oh, their facility? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, inc- it's incredible. State of the it, air. Uh, it blew my mind. I didn't know that it existed at the collegiate level. Anyway, check that out. Uh, for NCAA hockey and watch it. It's, it's legit. And uh, hopefully the Frozen Four games do get to go play in their own barns instead of – just uh, neutral sites. But let's leave it at that. Money weekend. Let's go. I'm Josh Ingles. He's Carlo Koliakvo. This is NHL Puck Prop presented by Sports Interaction. Lead us out, pal. Have a great weekend, folks.